So the point of this video is to talk through some of the design process on the XR pistol, ideas I worked on before, the redesign that I'm currently working on and why, sharing just design ideas and hoping maybe one or two people will give some ideas that I'm able to put into the XR pistol and help improve it. So starting out, I will go with a little bit of history. So this has nothing to do with the XR pistol. This had been a controller that I worked on before, and this was Vive Tracker based. So there were a lot of electronics in here. This thing was a real pain in the butt to build. It took a lot of dexterity, and as you can see from some of these severed wires, it was real easy to screw up, especially installing a knot. So I'll move this out of the way, move over our next. And you'll see the pattern with all of these. These all are using SIG 320 grip modules because I wanted to be able to fit into an ecosystem that already existed. And the really nice thing with the SIG 320 grip module, it is not a firearm, it's not anything that is regulated because this is not a serialized part. So none of this is anything with a weapon. This is just a very convenient piece of plastic to be able to make this feel correct and make sure that we have our ergonomics how they need to be. So what we have right here, this is the XR Pistol version one. So I did a ton of testing on this with Pistol Whip. This would take a Quest 2 controller. And though a Quest 3 controller could pretty much fit in here, when you look at how this tracks, and I put a video out earlier on this, there's a lot of LED lights here. And you can see from the masking tape that's around here, I've marked all of the locations of those, including one that's up right, sort of like right in this area. And so when you think about how you hold this, the controller faces away from you, which means it can't track it. So I had moved past this part of the design. I started sensing magazine state, was playing with some other stuff. And then Quest 3 came out and I had the realization that I had to start over again. So. This idea went bye-bye. I do have this version up on Thingiverse right now. It will be replaced by the version I'm working on right now. And so this light's just on here for ergonomics and testing. I had somewhere around here, I thought, another dummy light that I'm working on, so it'll be holsterable. But I do not see that, so I guess I'll just continue there. Yep, you don't see it. So in order to be able to track a Quest 3 controller, you need to make sure that this ring right here is facing you because all of those lights plus the one that's sort of right down in here is how it keeps track. So the version of the controller that I have right here, I really wanted to try to not have to have extra mounting hardware. So you'll see in this previous version, version one, I used TPU and that was flexible. And so once you put a controller in and you tighten both these down, it would squeeze in hold it pretty good but those are more parts it's annoying i can't say that this is all ironed out yet because of course i snapped off the little arm i had right here but when you look at the arm that is right over here and how this inserts so it goes there and then when i push it just clicks right into place there and so there was a lot of force being applied over on this side but there's not a ton of force that applies here, and it holds decently in here. So just from that arm, I cut this part off in my current phase of testing because I've been trying to make sure there's not actually too much force making it really difficult to get out. Now, what I've been playing with as far as tension on the trigger, I had a spring that was running between these. I guess I left that at my desk, but that made it so that there was just enough tension because right here, you don't really feel anything, and you'll sometimes have it get stuck here. So adding a very light expansion spring, I think is what it is. I, don't know, I just buy a huge bulk packs of springs for experimentation right now. That pulling back, I've been playing through a bunch of Pistol Whip songs, because that is my standard form of testing on here. And it was feeling pretty good going through like that. So. Now that I have a basic idea for the trigger, in the next version that I'm printing of this mount, right inside here, I'm having an internal cavity. So I'll be able to have a spring that pushes 
this direction on here instead of having that be external so there's nothing that stuck on. It'll then give me a set screw here that I can adjust and that'll adjust the trigger pull weight. So, and technically even if you wanted to get it up really, really high, you could just change out springs and hit whatever you want on there. Now that doesn't affect a breaker reset. That's something I'll still be playing with later, but with how much space there is around here, I think there's a lot of ideas that could work on that. From the other side here now, so I've got a hole that goes right through on there in the mount, directly under the grip button. That is so I'm going to be able to have a dummy light, much like this real luck one, but that behaves the same way. So it'll be mounted here, so whenever you press down on here, like you normally would momentary down to turn your light on, I'll be able to have something push up here with coming out the bottom there, something that's always on the top. So I'll be able to put my simulation light on here, press down on this side, and then have that press the grip button right up here in a nice little captive protective area. I've also been working on doing some reinforcements on the arms just to help reduce the chance of those accidentally getting sheared off. I'll be doing the same thing over in this area too, building this out a little bit more. There's a balance though of how much flexibility to make sure it won't accidentally snap like the other side. So now that, that covered the light, the next will be magazine state tracking. And so over in the area that's right around here, what I've been playing with is there's a rod I have that runs in the back from here down at an angle to over there. And so I have an arm that cantilevers here and when it pushes here, it rotates on the screw hole that's right in there. And when it rotates here, it goes back and forth like this. And with the proper balance of the spring pushing up right here against the arm as it goes back, it's enough strength to be able to push this button whenever no magazine's in. But then when you put the magazine in, and there's a cam that rotates back here as well, that goes from the down position when the magazine goes in, it comes up, pushes here, the rod goes down, this rotates over this way, which then pulls that away. So magazine in, you don't press something, remove the magazine, and it presses, so you've got a state of whenever you remove the magazine, presses the button, and now you have a state to track. The same idea, I have a slide that goes up on top along like this, and it overextends just like the setup that I had with this old one, where it overextends in the back. So just like you've got a weapon and slide drill lock, it's back, you'll be able to pull here, and I'm going to end up having another set of mechanisms in here. So when I pull back, that's when it's going to be pressing up, and it'll be pressing the button right here with A for our slide rack. I'll also tie into that same mechanism with the slide release. So when I press down on here, it's going to end up pressing up on there and it'll press this button as well. So all the ergonomics and mechanics that I need to be able to properly simulate the functions of a weapon, it'll hold and feel correct. Once I actually get all this stuff worked out, I'll go down the path of, is there some type of way I could actually afford to make some metal slides and sell pro versions and all that? But the weight of this, especially when you have a weighted dummy mag in here, and you've got the light filler on there and the slide, like it's decent. I haven't weighed it yet, but it does not feel like a cheap plastic little toy, even though it is, of course, almost all plastic, but it has some weight and it feels really, really nice. So I just wanted to talk through these ideas in part for myself to hear them out loud, but also to put them out there and see if this gives anybody else ideas. If they want to jump in, I'll link my Discord in the description of this. I would love to have some other people throwing ideas around on this. And, and this result already does work in Pistol Whip, which I've been using for testing because it's a nice high stress game. But I'm all primarily designing this for the game that I'm working on called Augmented Defender. Um, the company I have that I'm making this hardware in the game with is called Augmented Defense. We've got our webpage, which I'll link down below as well. And feel free to jump in the Discord if you want to get involved, ask questions. And I will, once this is finalized, be putting this Creative Commons licensed up on Thingiverse and probably some other places as well. So hope that some people want to get involved with this and that you enjoy the video. Have a good one.